everyone, my name is Tamara Chambers and this is Tamara Just Saw. And today I'm going to be talking about Bird Box, the Netflix meme sensation. I watched the movie last night and before watching it I heard so many extremes about what people thought about this film. It was crazy. Regardless of if it turned out to be good or bad for me, I was just impressed that I was hearing so much about it. So if you're hearing crap about it, you're still hearing about it. Netflix is incredible at getting their stuff seen. I'm such a Netflix fangirl, if you will. I think that they do such a good job with their content most of the time, with getting things out there, marketing most of the time. I heard a rumor that a lot of big name actors were turning things down, movies and TV shows down, because they were waiting on a Netflix contract. And that's significant. That is a really crazy shift in actors work, actors jobs, actors priorities. That's crazy. This stars Sandra Bullock and Trevante Rhodes, both who I really, really love. Moonlight is in my top three favorite films of all time and Miss Congeniality is a goddamn classic. It also has a lot of other people in it. Sarah Paulson from American Horror Story, which I love. Her. Danielle McDonald, who I just watched for the first time in Dumplin' and really enjoyed that movie. I will get into the acting of this film in a bit, but she was incredible in that. It was a pleasant surprise to see her in this again. John Malkovich. <laughs> and others. <laughs> Real quick, before I get into my thoughts about it, I wanted to bring up a few points about uh, a lot of the negativity it's getting. This movie is about a biological warfare monster Cthulhu looking dude. You don't actually see him, but you imagine him to look like Cthulhu. And it's going around and killing you, or making you kill yourself, if you see it. Hence, the blindfold. You saw the thumbnail, you get it. A lot of people are saying it's very reminiscent of A Quiet Place, but with singing instead of noises, or it's like the exact plot of the happening, which, true. Though Bird Box is based on a book, and the book was written before either of those movies were ever made, so there's that. Knocked down. It is so interesting though to see another movie made about something that we've already seen a bunch of times. So you could argue, yeah, sure, the book was done before, but why do we need another movie about these things? Which is fair. And it comes down to the fact that it's only worth it if the movie is good. I think the movie is neither of the extremes. I think it's 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 got some merit for sure. There's some really cool things being done. Overall, it just feels like it's really been done before. I think it's about 30, 40 minutes too long. And what I got out of it is that Sandra Bullock is in like a career high with her acting chops. Like she just took everything she could with this, I think, weirdly paced script, screenplay. Another thing I think that's difficult is I could not connect with any of these characters because the movie opens and you see Sandra Bullock's character, Mallory, rowing a boat on the river with two children. You get the sense that that's, we're headed towards that. That's not like the start of the movie and then, you know, we get to meet all these lovable characters. <laughs> Uh, you get the sense that this is the end of the film and we're all we're gonna keep jumping back to her on the boat Which you do which I really enjoy those parts, but that means That you're probably not gonna have the rest of the people I got the sense from the very first shot of the movie that those were our core three people And that everyone else was probably going to die because this is the end of the world scenario movie and I had a really hard time connecting with all of the characters except for Javante Rhodes him and Sandra had amazing chemistry, and I wish he... Spoilers. <laughs> I wish he wouldn't die. Also, I had a hard time connecting with people because it was that 
just movie cliche of all of these people, this group of random strangers, all get together, and now they're living in this home and it's the end of the world. We've seen this before in movies like It Comes at Night, where people gather together and they don't want to be together, but they have to be together, and like The Mist, there was a lot of pullings from The Mist as well. A lot of movies that this movie pulled from, and the question still remains, is this a better movie than those movies? I think The Mist is fun enough. I think The Happening is a garbage train wreck. No! I think A Quiet Place is really good and also has some flaws. And I think this is definitely worthy of people's time and absolutely has flaws. Again, I just keep coming back to Sandra Bullock was just mwah in this. She was so good. The rest of the characters, though, were not likable, not enjoyable. The character Danielle McDonald plays Olympia is so unlikable. She calls herself spoiled, and so that's just kind of what I took and I ran with that feeling for that character, but <laughs> I'm pretty sure we're supposed to love her. I also think that her cuteness and her acting style and acting choices really worked in Dumplin'. I don't think they carried over into this. I think a lot of the acting styles just clashed tremendously in this movie. Milton Howery from Get Out plays pretty much a very similar character as he does in Get Out and he's just so great in Get Out. And in this, it, the, the tone of it just like really clashes with everyone because it's a very serious thing and there's like a want to be funny with his character and it doesn't pull through as funny and so it's just kind of like really clashing. John Malkovich is... <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> hilariously terrible in this movie. Doug and Rob Walker are always pretty hard on John Malkovich, or at least lovingly make fun of him and his acting style. And I don't know that I've ever, I don't even know if I've seen him in anything. I probably have, I don't know. Listen, who knows? <laughs> but this, everything that he did in this movie, I was like, oh my God, Doug and Rob are so correct. And then I will say that some of the deaths look a little cheesy to me. The first death we see is this woman in a hospital hitting her head against glass. It looks cheesy. She's not really doing the motion hard enough for it to clack, clack, for it to crack this glass, crack and glass together, clack. I'm just, you know, I'm trying to speed up the whole video for you guys. Anyways, for it to crack this glass window that's gotta be, it's a thick hospital window. I don't imagine it's very thin glass and she's just kind of bonking her head and so it looks cheesy when her first crash against it just shatters the glass and there's blood everywhere it's kind of final destination -y. some of the deaths look really good and some of them don't look really good and I imagine that's just because there's a lot of deaths happening that they didn't you know spend a million years on all of them it's a mistake I think I think that I don't know it, it made it less effective. But the things that really, really, really worked well for me were the suspenseful moments that they did incredibly well. There's a scene that takes place in a car. They're driving to go get groceries at a grocery store because they can't look. They black out the windows and they're driving and they're using GPS and a proximity sensor on the car. And you gotta suspend some disbelief, but I love it. I think it's really well done. It's very suspenseful, it's thrilling, they make it there, and then that whole scene is very suspenseful and thrilling. I just wrote, lol, at the local grocery store having six industrial walkie-talkies. Just out at the front. <laughs> No. <laughs> Some of the scenes are really good where in most of the movie you don't get that great of character development. There's one scene where Mallory and Tom and the two kids are looking for groceries and Mallory finds a box of strawberry Pop-Tarts. There's one little thing, sleeve of Pop-Tarts and she breaks both of them in half and they each get a fourth of a Pop-Tart or a half of a Pop-Tart and she's like, this is what strawberry tastes like because the kids have never had strawberry before. And then they just sit there kind of giggling and in quiet with each other and they're just taking this moment in and then they hear cars come up and it's those crazy people who can see and they're trying to get, kill them. So it's a really good moment. It's suspenseful, it's sweet, you get a sense of who they are. And then there's just weird scenes where John Malkovich <laughs> says that he's making the grocery store gradient. I just, it's so weird to me. In that scene, that's when Tom dies and Mallory is left with the two children and then you're just on the river for the rest of it. And it's so 
suspenseful on the river. At this moment, I don't care that it's very similar to a lot of films because it's very intense, it's keeping my attention. I will say that a lot of the movie didn't keep my, it just moved a little too slow for me in some parts. Like 69%, I didn't mean to say 69, well, nice. 69% I <laughs> get my real attention and then the rest was just kind of like okay it's not I'm not upset at it but it's just a little slow moving and they make it to where they've been traveling this whole time on the river which is a compound where they heard there was safety and you find out that it is a school for the blind and I was wondering when they were going to address that like there's a big um, a huge amount of people here that we are not addressing I feel like that was way underutilized I feel like one of the characters would have definitely mentioned that by now, but it made the reveal of it being a school for the blind a lot better. There's no resolution, there's no fix for the future, but for the moment they're safe and it felt like a good ending to me. There's some total weird holes and missteps in this film, but overall I still found a merit in it. I still really liked it. The biggest thing I took away from it is that Sandra Bullock rules. There's a monologue in this movie. The kids have been separated from her and she's trying to get them back and the boy reveals that the girl is scared and so she makes this plea to the girl and it is worth sitting through the movie just to see that monologue. It is so damn good. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you all next week with another movie. Bye.